Yo Koso, my name is Vince and welcome to another Rocky.com video. It's been long overdue since I recorded another video, so yeah, it's been a while. How you guys doing? I'm fine. Um, so yeah, today on a whim, I actually felt like recording or making another video and the most efficient way for me to do that was just to play some games and talk about it. This is mainly post-commentary, uh, or entirely post-commentary, because to be very honest with you, um, it already feels quite awkward talking to my microphone like this, uh, as it's been such a while, so I can't imagine playing the game and simultaneously talking about it, I think that would feel even more awkward. So it's post-commentary, and also then I can just stop myself from rambling sometimes. Today we'll be playing Rurouni Kenshin Saisen, which is a sequel to Rurouni Kenshin Kansei. That's a PlayStation Portable uh, fighting game. Uh, as you can see, it's entirely in Japanese, and to my knowledge, there isn't any English patch available. Um, so yeah, we'll just have to make do with what we know of the Japanese language. Luckily, as it's a fighting game, you don't really have to be able to read. Japanese, so we'll do fine. Um, this screen, I just stumbled upon it by pressing some buttons that I saw in the bottom uh, bottom bar there. Um, I think this is where you unlock new equipment or new stats for each character. And as you could see just before, there's quite a lot of characters here. We'll be playing the normal story mode, uh, which just goes about the story, I think up until the end of the manga even, so yeah, that, that's a lot of content thrown at you. The first fight here, uh, I have to apologize for the recording hiccups here and there, especially during the, the first fight with Kaoru here. Um, the editing, recording software, it's weird sometimes. So we fight Kaoru, uh, well, fight, <laughs> the story, in the original story it wasn't really a fight, but yeah, it's fighting game. So I don't know any of the controls, uh, not at all, I just briefly played this once just to see if it was working and yet I'm pulling off special moves like it's nothing. Uh, it plays similarly to, what else, Street Fighter, so most of the moves like uh, Hadouken, you just do the arrow keys and the attack button, you'll pretty much dish, dish out some special moves right there. You saw Kaoru losing her weapon, uh, she picked it up, that was a nice finisher though. No? She picked it up, uh, you can disarm your opponent, uh, then they'll just have to fight hand by hand. Uh, it's kind of similar system to Samurai Showdown, uh, it's, it's interesting. It didn't have that much difficulty, uh, too bad I didn't figure out how to really use any of the systems. There's a that, that right there, some kind of special mode if you hit your opponent, it goes into the slow-mo thing and you can do some massive combo, I didn't know how to do it. Uh, the bottom left or bottom right uh, symbols indicate how many times you can pull it off. Uh, obviously you have a special meter to execute your ultimate attack. Uh, to my knowledge there's only one, I've only really found one. Uh, it's, 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 it's cool, it plays pretty fast, it's fast paced. It's not, not like uh, games like Tekken or Virtual Fighter where it's pretty slow, no no, it's pretty, pretty fast. When I first saw this game being made, I really thought, oh god, no, they're going with the entire brush stroke approach like they did for a commercial video for Street Fighter 4, I believe. I was really sure what... <laughs> Look at that, Kaoru just, just wanted to pick up her weapon and I beat her to it. <laughs> uh, it, it, uh, it it sort of feels okay, brush strokes, it doesn't really bother me, but... You know, it's kind of weird in a way. I do like the the fact that the line art on the characters is pretty, pretty thick. The yeah, there he goes. It's pretty thick, so it really distinguishes or makes the characters in the foreground pop out. That's a nice touch. So, you really get the entirety of the story here. Um, well, in, in a trimmed down form, obviously. And here we have a battle results screen. We did pretty well. Yeah. Pretty happy with this. So the story mode is separated into the stages where you fight, uh, fight the, ca the, the characters. As you see, now our next stage is uh, versus Sanosuke. So we're skipping uh, the entire Hiruma thing. You can see Hiruma <laughs> uh, in the background of the stage here, right there. That's, that's a nice touch. 
This is the fight where I figured out how to do the slow-mo thing and the ultimate attack. But there were some hiccups, obviously. Tano is a very difficult character if you don't watch out. That Zambato, there I just thought he was saying, no idea how the hell I did that. You have a Bato Jutsu stance. Um, it does a lot of damage if you manage to hit the opponent after you do it, but you can't move. That Zambato has crazy range, it's really bloody dangerous. If you don't watch out and, and, and Sanosuke combos you into anything, you'll, you'll end up with massive damage. I disarmed him there. I don't know if he's able to pick it up, but obviously Sano being a bare knuckle fighter, it's not really such a big issue if he loses the Zambato. Still doing my best here to not let him take it again. Oh boy, that's a slowdown and he got me into a combo. Luckily he didn't finish me off right there. This, is, this was really close. I was really worrying I was going to lose it. Especially now. Oh, a sliver of health left. And I pressed the pause screen to, well, see the explanation. How the hell do you play this game? There are three attack buttons. Uh, light attack, medium, strong attack. Um, obviously, light attack is a lot faster than a strong attack. Here, I got the explanation. Oh, oh, pressing the right trigger does something. Oh, that, that's cool, okay. And then I was looking at the moves. As you can see, basic Street Fighter setup, lots of combos. And here we go, That's a, that looks like a, a special, an ultimate technique right there, right? So I immediately pressed uh, one of the shoulder buttons to execute the ultimate attack and Sano dodged it. This is a slowdown mode, I think that's the left trigger, I'm not sure. The, the trick about it is you do have to hit your opponent in order for the slowdown to take effect. If you don't hit him, then it'll just pause and you wasted it. So I got the Zambato back. I was lucky, 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 lucky I finished him off right here. Six seconds to spare. Yeah. Come on, Sano. I was bummed out because I wasted my ultimate and I really wanted to see how it looked. And here he goes, slow mode. It's particularly effective if you engage it when you're really close to your opponent as you're about to hit him. Because then yeah, you, you do have the slowdown effect. He's being a bit less aggressive here. I'm still trying to figure out how the, the attacks and the combos work. But in Ash's game, you can get pretty far. The, the light attack is really fast, so if you just keep doing that, then oh, slow down. That ended up doing nothing. That's my ultimate again, and I missed. <laughs> really have to work on that. Apparently, you can also double jump. I saw Sano do it, but I really have no idea how to do it. And here, I think I was just spamming the light attack. That's a special. But I, apparently, I blocked that. I don't know how. Was I just normally blocking? I have no clue, but I blocked his ultimate. That Zanbato, man. That's really dangerous weapon. Slow down, and this is where I pull it off, I think. Yes, there you go. See? If you hit him, bam. It's really useful if you use it properly and I'm guessing in the on the harder difficulty levels or uh, fighting against stronger opponents it, it really becomes a necessity to use it because Kaoru wasn't that hard to defeat but Sana was yeah, already a lot more a lot more difficult than Kaoru which is pretty big jump in difficulty so yeah we finished this fight I think we got a higher score then with Kaoru. The next fight is against Jine. 
But we're not gonna do that right now. We're gonna check out um, the character screen here. We apparently got Sunan. This is where I figured out, oh, okay, this is like a shop. I, you pay 400 gold, I have that many gold for something. No idea what it is. Percentage meter. I think it's really just stats. I don't know. Maybe movesets. Uh, so I bought that level 2 for 4,000. This is for 20,000, level 3. I think this is optional voices. Or maybe it just unlocks the voice test in the menu or something, I don't know. And yes, I'm still a coffee addict. Up next is a game I've been wanting to play for a very long time. It's uh, Ultimate J-Stars for the Nintendo DS. Uh, I have never uh, played it because it sort of fights like a Smash Brothers game, but it's got a lot of RPG elements in it. and. Yeah, playing an RPG in Japanese, uh, as is evident from uh, the Ruroni Kenshin RPG on the PlayStation 1, is pretty difficult. You really need to know what you're doing or play the game uh, with a walkthrough, otherwise you'll just end up endlessly searching and don't know what the hell you're doing. But thankfully, there's an English uh, translation patch for this game. Um, my main goal was to, oh, okay, uh, I know this game has uh, Kenshin in it and other Kenshin characters, but I, I, I know that Himura Kenshin is a playable character, so uh, it might be fun to start off and just play this. Uh, to my dismay, and probably also yours, uh, Kenshin isn't a selectable character from the beginning. You have to unlock him. Um, and there's a bunch of tutorials, so if that's not your thing, then this will probably be pretty boring. However, I will be talking about some other stuff. Um, the story basically revolves around the, the jump uh, universe being in, in, in disarray. Stuff is happening, the galaxies or the worlds are colliding, and whatever weak excuse they can come up with to throw all of the jump care, all of the popular jump characters into a game and where they beat each other up. So the uh, tutorials basically explain to you how you're able to move, attack, jump, how the entire coma system works, which is basically um, a, a manga panel you see in the bottom, uh, in the lower screen, right there. You can customize with whatever characters you want. You have assist characters, you have uh, help characters and that influence stats and whatnot. So it's, it's a pretty in-depth game. Um, this has been very popular on the internet, as evident by the English fan translation, which is, for the most part, pretty accurate. Uh, it's written pretty decently. We're playing as Luffy here, um, and that brings me on an interesting uh, topic that I read recently. Um, One Piece creator Echiro Oda, uh, well, at least one of his art works uh, recently surfaced, where Oda actually drew Himura Kenshin. And to be honest, uh, the, the backlash that the internet, uh, especially Kenshin fans, have given it is unbelievable. Uh, yes, it, it's not a pretty piece of art. I mean, he's done better things. Um, to be honest, I really don't like it. It's it's no. I, I I've never actually enjoyed Echiroda's drawing style or his art style as compared to other mangakas. Um, I'm also not that big of a One Piece fan. Never really followed it. I have not gotten into the hype. I've watched a couple of episodes in the anime um, with that one long nose character uh, in particular. He's pretty funny. He's some kind something about a vampire or something. Somehow One Piece just really doesn't captivate me as other franchises do. Um, I mean, sure, it, it's left a big legacy on pop culture in Japan and indeed the entire world. It's been the uh, representative of anime and manga in the West since forever, along with uh, Naruto and obviously Dragon Ball. And to be honest, I, I like Naruto and Dragon Ball a whole lot more than One Piece. Uh, I don't have anything against pirates, <laughs> but you know, it, uh, to me, uh, as, a fr as a former student or pupil to Nobuhiro Watsuki, Echiro Oda is surprisingly a letdown artist for me, uh, both in regards to the story as the character development and especially the manga paneling. Um, if I read a, a, a chapter of One Piece, 
I get really confused. It's, it's, no, it, it doesn't have any logical structure. Um, it, it's chaotic all over the place. I mean, ADHD overdrive. Um, it's hard for me to follow. Every, every panel is chock full of, of detail. <laughs> it's really, there's no focus, and, and that's basically my, my biggest complaint about One Piece. So, the art piece, uh, as you can see, it's really not flattering at all. Uh, is it indeed a work of Ichiroda? Probably. Uh, it's got the autograph and everything. Uh, does it deserve the backlash? No, probably not, but you know how fandoms get when negative things like this surface every time. So yeah, there's that. Um, and to Watsuki's credit, I think he did a much better tribute to One Piece, both in the actual Rurouni Kenshin manga, uh, as you can see here, and um, a couple of uh, one-shot panels with Luffy and Kenshin together, I believe. I can't remember, but I'll, I'll look. I'll look up. I'll look the image up and show you on the screen. So there's that. Another news. Uh, I've heard, I've not seen the Attack on Titan live-action film yet. I've seen the trailers and I've also read a lot about the, the, the fandom doing a backlash like once more about the fact that Mikasa and... Um, ah, what was the main character's name again? Uh, it's not Erwin, is it? You know, main character... Oh, what's his name? Can't remember. I really can't remember. But they were, kiss they were seen kissing in the trailer. I pissed off a lot of fans because in the in the manga and anime they really don't share any kind of romantic relationship. It's more like a brother and sister thing. But apparently the director in the live action movies thought it was a good idea to have them romantically involved, which is nonsense. But yeah, it really diminishes the the relationship these characters have in the original story. But what you gonna do, man? Um, and, well, from the reviews, uh, I've read everywhere, I don't think I've read a positive review anywhere, um, the movie really blows. Uh, in comparison to the Rurouni Kenshin live-action movies, the Attack on Titan movie is really, uh, really garbage. I haven't, again, I have not seen the film, so I can't really give you my opinion on it, but I'm... If, if, the vast majority of reviews say it's a really bad movie. It's probably gonna be a bad movie. Um, another news, uh, the Rurouni Kenshin trilogy um, actually earned 12 billion yen since late 2014. I think that translates into something like 100 million dollars? 120? Uh, I'll put the exact number on the screen. Um, I don't really know, but still, it's a crap ton of money. Um, that's the entire trilogy combined, so the first movie, the second and the third one. Um, regardless of the fact that the Attack on Titan film is garbage, it's still going to earn a lot of money because people want to see it. Attack on Titan is hyped, it is the franchise since the anime launched in the West. Um, it's been really, really popular and people had a lot of high expectations for a live-action film just as they did with the Rurouni Kenshin films, but unfortunately for in Attack on Titan's case, uh, the translation from manga to film really didn't do them any favors. That's also been posted on uh, our Facebook fan page and on other news sites. Uh, there's going to be an all-female live-action Rurouni Kenshin play um, done by the Takarazuka Review, which is uh, an all-female <laughs> all uh, theater group. Um, it'll be in theaters uh, somewhere in Febru February 2016. Uh, so there's more Rurouni Kenshin stuff to look forward to, even though we probably won't ever get to see it unless we go to Japan. Maybe, maybe internet as a video, maybe, who knows, or they'll bring out some kind of DVD, whatever. Um, what immediately came to my mind was, oh wait, an all-female um, theater troupe? Uh, and that definitely sparked uh, Mayo Suzukaze in my mind, um, because yeah, she, she got a big start in the theater as part of an all-female theater troupe which happens to be the 
same theater troupe that is now doing the all-female live action review on the Kenshin play, the Takarazuka review. She was a part of that. Uh, in fact, she was very famous in it, but after she retired from the troupe, she went on to do other things. Uh, mainly her marriage got involved. Uh, Mainly her marriage was a cause of her not being able to do as much as she did before. She's always been kind of a low spotlight uh, person. So yeah, you gotta respect that. But in either case, um, she was part of the, the, the troupe. And it's actually a bit sad that she doesn't get to be able to play uh, Himura Kenshin. Um, or a cameo for that matter. Oh, maybe... Maybe a cameo, who knows, that, that might be fun. Um, but seeing as she is the voice of Himura Kenshin in the anime, uh, several video games and all of the uh, original video animations, it's kind of ironic that, that the same uh, theater group that she was a part of is now doing the, the, the play. Oh well. She's probably too old anyway. Uh, gotta face the facts, even though Asians do seldom seldomly show that they're actually aging These people do not get wrinkles <laughs> uh, she is probably too old because I think she's near her 50s uh, at this point in time 40s or 50s I can't remember um, so yeah there's that all right I think I'm mostly out of news facts um, there are a couple of other things uh, to note. Uh, there's a little segment I've been wanting to do for a long time, which is to be able to uh, directly interact with you guys uh, a lot more than I previously did. Um, so I got a couple of YouTube comments uh, lined up right here. I don't know if I'll be able to get through all of them um, for the duration of this gameplay video. What's happening now is basically this is the tutorial on how to set up your Koma deck. Uh, you can place the panels um, uh, however you want. Uh, Luffy and Naruto in these cases are the only playable characters. Uh, Gintoki and that kid next to him are the help characters, they increase stats. Uh, the arrow points to the character that they're giving the stat increase to, or not only stats but special abilities and whatnot. Um, below Goku, of the panel of Goku and Chi Chi right there, that's a support character. They quickly come into the field of battle and they either help you by doing an attack or, permanent, or uh, momentarily giving you a stat increase or something like that. But the support characters actually show up in the field. The help characters, they don't. That's a passive stat. So let me pull up the comments real quick. Um... There was a question by Zelenal on one of the earlier Angel Kyoto Rine playthroughs uh, with Kenshin. He asks if I know how to manually save the game because he can't seem to find the information on that simple fact. Well, yes, Zelenal, that's what you get with a Japanese game as there is no English translation. Apart from some rudimentary walkthroughs, the rest is go figure it out yourself. Um, I do remember how to manually save, and um, seeing as it'll be easier to explain, I'll just edit that in later. You can't save in the pause menu uh, whenever you're free roaming and press start, as you've probably already noticed. You have to go to the map screen where you select the location and then press the square button. This will bring up the save menu. Furthermore, uh, Magic Shinigami Wolf, I really like your name, your, your avatar is a bit weird though, but okay, it's a police officer, so kinda matches. Um, he's asking when part 3 of the Shimabara arc review will be coming out. Uh, uh, <laughs> the arc review takes up a lot more time um, creating than I initially anticipated. Uh, you know, I, I think in the very first uh, episode of the Shimabara, Shimabara arc review, I mentioned that, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna do the Shimabara arc because doing things like the Kyoto arc and so on, they, they, they will really take up a lot of time because, yeah, they also deserve the quality. I, I need to spend a lot of time in creating that because I want to be that, I, I want it to be the definitive, my definitive review on that arc and seeing as the Kyoto arc in the anime is the most 
spectacular, most interesting one. Um, I wanted to, I wanted to do that one later, but then I noticed, oh, bloody hell, there's a lot of episodes here. I still have like three episodes left in that arc to do the review. I have started uh, editing part three, um, but it's taking up a lot more time than I initially anticipated, for which I apologize. Um, also, it seems more than likely that, that I'll split the final part up in two pieces, so we'll have part three and part four, because as usual I overestimate these things greatly. Creating edited videos or heavily edited videos of 20 to 30 to 40 minutes, uh, that's, that, that takes a really long time to not only export, um, but also to upload, and with my shitty internet connection, that takes forever. Magic Shinigami Wolf also goes on to ask if uh, there's an English patch available for Enjo Kyotorine, um, which he asked me in the You Can Play This, where I explain how you can play Enjo Kyotorine. Um, no, there is no English patch. Uh, if you go look on online, there are a couple of uh, people that started a project to translate it. Uh, basically, they were asking questions to PlayStation 2 uh, hackers how they can access all of the files so they can actually do the translation. Uh, but that project uh, no longer seems active. Uh, it was posted in 2014, so maybe if you contact those guys, uh, see what's up, and at least show that they're still interested in, interest in it, they might pick it up. But there's a lot, a whole lot of text in there. Even if they just only translate the basic things like the menu system, uh, the techniques, and so on, which should be pretty easy um, if you can figure out how to actually edit the text in the game, uh, then, you know, there's a possibility. Still, if you play it, um, you can you can check, the, check out the translations on my Let's Play. Um, yeah. The menus and the techniques are not really that difficult to figure out what they mean and, you know, <laughs> you also learn a bit of Japanese. Next one is not really a question, but this was posted by Chibi Laichi, who said that the voice actor for Saito died from lung cancer, which is indeed correct, and that Saito Hajime smokes like a human train, which is pretty ironic. Very sad, but ironic, I agree. Um, <laughs> that is very ironic. Mm, next one is, is also not really a question, more like a comment. Um, by, I, I believe he's Russian? I can't pronounce this, this is too hard. Uh, he says about the Runic Kenshin Soul and Sword video, or my, my initial review of the beta game. Uh, he says that it's a really hard game, or he just sucks, but it's really fun. Yeah, Hito Kiribato Sai is awesome. Talking about the character in the game, um, which I believe I mentioned at that time was my favorite character, or is my favorite character. Um, it is a really hard game. Don't, don't, uh, you don't suck, probably. You're just not a pro at fighting games. <laughs> Neither am I. I'm gonna end it at that. Uh, here in the game, we just entered the Degre Man world. Uh, I was looking for the Rurouni Kenshin world, but it's not accessible yet. Probably have to do all these other worlds first. Um, it's not just a straight beat em up. Um, you really have to do the mission objectives. In this case, it's collect all of the coins or collect more coins than your opponents do. So it doesn't really matter if you keep fighting uh, or if you defeat the opponents. I, I died a couple of times by jumping off the stage too. You just have to collect more coins. Unfortunately, I was not successful in that. Luffy is... Yeah. Also, unlike Super Smash Bros., which is a lot faster, a lot more fast-paced, uh, this was hard to get used to. Also, I don't know if it's the stage or if it's just Luffy, but he slides over this, this, uh, over the ground, it's really annoying and hard to get used to. I'm probably just whining. I picked the Degre Man one because 
out of the all the worlds that were available, Liga Man is the, the show that interests me the most. So hey, it'd be cool to unlock Alan Walker or Lena Lee. I might play more of Ultimate Stars. Probably, I'll, I'll probably only just upload a video when I actually get Kenshin as a playable character, um, which makes sense, right? Um, and maybe also do it on Kenshin's Eisen. I'm, I'm not sure. That depends on you guys. What you want to see first? Um, in the meantime, I'm also working on Shimabara Art Part Three and Part Four. It's a long ass video. And uh, I've got something other special planned, which revolves around the Japanese uh, history, uh, mainly the Meiji Revolution, seems fitting for the Rurouni Kenshin channel, um, that I hope you guys will like. So, thanks for watching, and see you next time.